Income tax 2021-2022 depreciation of rental property part number six. Get ready to get refunds to the max diving into income tax 2021-2022. Most of this information can be found in Publication 527, Residential Rental Property Tax Year 2021, IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Income tax formula, we're focused on line one, income. We would have a subschedule, basically an income statement with income and expenses. Expenses basically being deductions to net then what rolls into line one income of the income tax formula, as well as eventually page one of the form 1040. This is the schedule. Schedule E, in essence, that income statement schedule. We're looking at the supplemental income and loss, and we're focused on the rental real estate. So we're continuing on here with the residential rental property. You must use the straight line method and a mid-month convention for residential rental property. So we've been discussing the idea and the fact that when you're thinking about depreciation, the tax code is going to try to be more stringent more than, say, generally accepted accounting principles where you might try to make an estimate on the useful life. The tax code is trying to say everything fits into these categories that we have here, and then you have to depreciate them according to those categories. Where, where does the residential rental property fit in that category? Well, we talked about the number of years that the residential rental property is covered over, and now we're focused in on the conventions, those conventions being things like a mid-year convention, a mid-quarter convention, a mid-month convention. These are kind of assumptions that we make to estimate and make the calculations a little bit easier in terms of when something was purchased. So if it was purchased in the middle of the month, a mid-month convention, or if it was purchased anywhere in a month, <laughs> a mid-month convention would say that it was purchased in the middle of the month. If it was a mid-year convention, then whenever it was purchased in the year, we assume it was purchased in the middle of the year. If it was a mid-quarter convention, then whenever it was purchased in a particular quarter of a year, it was assumed to be purchased in the middle of the quarter. The rental property, the residential rental property, we're going to use the mid-month convention, and you can see why they would want to do that. They would want to be more stringent on the convention as opposed to something like five-year property, which is smaller in dollar amount, where they might use a mid-year convention in that case because there's so much money involved in the rental property. So you want to be a little bit more precise with the mid-month convention as opposed to a mid-year convention for example so the first year that you claim the depreciation for residential rental property you can claim depreciation only for the number of months the property is in use use the mid-month convention explained under conventions earlier so we got the five seven or 15 year property for property in the five uh, or seven year class use the 200 percent declining balance that's the double declining if you know your your accounting, you don't have to know the accounting to do this, software helps, but the double declining method uh, and the half year convention. So if you wanna kinda have an idea of what is happening here, all depreciation methods kind of are based on the idea of a straight line method, taking the cost that we have, the basis that we're calculating, allocating it over the useful life, which for the tax code is basically whatever they force us to allocate it over, right? Because it's a little bit more stringent. And that's the general rule. But you might say, hey, we want to accelerate some of it, depreciate more in the front end, which sometimes is a logical or rational thing to do, not just a funny tax code thing to do, because it's likely that things are going to deteriorate in value faster earlier than later. So it kind of makes sense to depreciate a little bit more up front instead of evenly over the useful life. So that's kind of a normal, generally accounting principle thing. But for taxes, we like that from the taxpayer side, and sometimes the code likes that, the tax code that is, the politicians that is, because they're trying to stimulate the economy. So, and that one way to do that is to try to incentivize purchasing stuff by allowing people to depreciate more upfront. So that's the double declining method. And then they have that half year convention, which is a little different than generally accepted accounting principles where you kind of assume it was purchased in the middle of the year if it falls into that five or seven year class. So however, uh, in limited cases, you must use the mid quarter convention if it applies. So, and that usually happens if people, if they feel that you're taking advantage of the mid year convention, because what might you do? You might say, hey, I'm gonna try to purchase everything in December. I'm gonna purchase everything in December 31st, and then I'm gonna take six months of depreciation on it. 
and the and the code's going to say, well, now you're kind of abusing this mid-year convention thing. So now we're going to make you use a mid-quarter convention. So if property, so for property in the 15-year class, you got to use the 150 double the uh, uh, double the DB method and a half-year convention. So that's going to be similar to the uh, you know double declining balance, which I, that's what I would typically call it in a, in a uh, generally accepted accounting principles. But now you got 150 instead of the 200, so it's not double declining; it's one one. 50 declining, 150 declining. Other than that, similar kind of concept. You can also choose to use the 150 uh, DB declining balance method for property in the five or seven year class if you choose to do that. You wouldn't typically choose to do that because you would you get more benefit if you could take more of it up front or sooner with the, what I would call the double declining or the 200% declining uh, method. But you can imagine situations where you might want to taper it back a bit, possibly because you have a, a loss or something that's past the threshold or something like that in a current year. So the choice to use the 150 method for one item uh, in a class of property applies to all property in that class that is placed in service during the tax year of the election. So you can't just pick and choose. You know, you got to you got to stick to everything in that year, at least uh, with that one method that whatever you choose, if you choose something different. You make this election on form 4562 in part three, column F, enter the 150 DB. Once you make this election, you can't change it to another method. So you're stuck with it after that point in time because you got to be consistent. If you use either the 200% or the 100% declining balance method, figure your deduction using the straight line method in the first uh, tax year. The straight line method gives you uh, an equal or larger deduction. So in other words, that sounds kind of funny. Like you can figure it like the double, like if I was going to calculate the double declining method, I would calculate the double declining method, but then it's a half year convention. So you take half of it and now you're back to like the normal straight line for the first year. So, so you end up, it, it ends up looking like you're in a straight line method, even though you're using a kind of a double or 200% declining method. So they're basically saying just use the straight line method in the first year, which is kind of confusing, actually, because it leads people to think that that's going to be what happens in year two. But it's not because it's a double declining method with a half year convention that they used the straight line method in the first year for because that's what they told us to do. So you can also choose to use the straight line method uh, with a half year or mid quarter convention for five, seven or 15 year property. The choice to use the straight line method for one item in a class or property applies to all property in that class that is placed in service during the tax year of the election. So we could use a straight line. We wouldn't typically want to do that for tax purposes because that would be less depreciation up front. We usually want to depreciate more up front, but you can think of circumstances where it might be useful to do that. It might more closely mirror what you're doing on a book basis as well, which could be a reason for people to do it. But usually you want accelerated depreciation for the tax code. You elect the straight line method on form 4562 in part three, column F, enter SL. That stands for straight line, I suppose. They didn't tell me that, but that I'm guessing stands for straight line. Once you make this election, uh, you can't change uh, to another method. So you're stuck. You're locked in. That's what it is. It is what it is. Makers percentage tables. You can use the percentage in table 2-2 to compute annual depreciation under makers. So you could do the calculation, calculating the double declining method with the mid-year convention and so on. Or you can use the tables, which is kind of cheating, but it is that makes it a little bit easier. The tables show the percentages for the first few years or until the change to the straight line method is made. So it's kind of funny when you got that double declining or accelerated method. It's kind of a, it's not a very precise method. At the end, at the end, you kind of have to have to finagle it to work at the end so you don't over depreciate and whatnot. But I won't get into that now. See, see Appendix A, of Publication 946 for complete tables. The percentages in Table 22A, uh, 22B, and 22C make the change from the DB, the declining balance, to straight line in the year that straight line will give a larger deduction. If you elect to use the straight line method for 5, 7, or 15 property, or the 150 uh, declining balance method for 5, seven, five or 7 year property, use the tables in Appendix A of Publication 946, which you can find on the IRS website. How to use the percentage tables. 
So how do I use those tables once I find them, you might ask. Well, here we go. You must apply the tables rate to your property's unadjusted basis defined later each year of the recovery period. Once you begin using a percentage table to figure depreciation, you must continue to use it for the entire recovery period unless there is an adjustment to the basis of your property for a reason other than uh, depreciation allowed or allowable or an addition or improvement that is depreciated as a separate item of property. So most people use the table because most people are using the tax software and the tax software typically uses the table. So if there is an adjustment for any reason other than one or two, for example, because of a deductible casualty loss, you can no longer use the table. Uh, for the year of the adjustment, and for the remaining recovery period, figure depreciation using the property's adjusted basis at the end of the year and the appropriate depreciation method, as explained earlier under figuring your depreciation deducted. I see figuring the deduction without using the tables in Chapter 4, Publication 946, if you want to take a look at that. Adjusted basis. So now we're talking about that basis is, again, which we thought we talked about as like the cost or the adjusted cost of the property that we're going to be allocating or depreciating, meaning we're going to be expensing them uh, over time. So this is the same basis you would use to figure gain on a sale. So the basis is important because when we sell the property and we figure the gain, it's the sales price minus the basis. The basis is typically going down as we expense it because we're getting the use of the, the purchase price when we expense it lowering the basis which is lowering the the adjusted you know the, the you can call it the book value which means when we sell it we're going to have a higher gain as we depreciate the property so see basis and depreciation property earlier but without reducing your original basis by any maker's depreciation taken in earlier years however uh, you do reduce your original basis by other amounts claimed on the property, including any amortization, any Section 179 deduction, and any special depreciation allowance. For more information, you can see Chapter 4 of Publication 946. And note here, we're talking the unadjusted basis is where we're focused at that point. So Table 2, 2A, 22B, and 22C, the percentages in these tables take into account the half-year and mid-quarter conventions. Use Table 22A for five-year property, Table 22B for seven-year property, and Table 22C for 15-year property. Use the percentage in the second column, half-year convention, unless you are required to use the mid-quarter convention explained earlier. If you must use the mid-quarter convention, use the column that corresponds to the calendar year quarter in which you place the property in service now actually of course in practice we're probably going to be using software to help us out with these calculations but we need to understand them both to explain them to people and to be able to plan in the to the future as to what will happen as well so here's our tables here's the table for the makers gds percentage tables makers five year so that the half year convention we've got years one through six we've got the mid-quarter conventions first quarter second quarter and so on and this is for the seven-year property and the 15-year property and the residential uh, property as well so example one let's do an example let's do that the purchase uh, you purchased a stove and a refrigerator and placed them in service in june your basis in the stove is six hundred dollars and your basis in the refrigerator is one thousand dollars both are five-year property using the half year convention column in table 2-2a the depreciation percentage year one is 20 percent for that year your depreciation deduction is 120 which is 600 times 20 percent or 0.2 for the stove and 200 which is 1000 times 20 percent or 0.20 for the refrigerator for year two the depreciation percent is 32 percent so that year's depreciation deduction will be 192 which is 600 times 32 percent or 0.32 for the stove and 320 which is 1000 times 32 percent or 0.32 for the refrigerator example number two assume the same facts as in example one except you buy the refrigerator in october so now it's past the year you're going to have this mid-quarter convention 
thing that's going to pop into play here instead of June because the refrigerator was placed in service in the last three months of the tax year and its base is 1,000 is more than 40 percent of the total basis of all property placed in service during the year 1,600 times 40 percent equals 640. Uh, you are required to use the mid-quarter convention. So now we got to switch to the mid-quarter tables uh, convention to figure the depreciation on both the stove and, and the refrigerator. So because you placed the refrigerator in service in October, you use the fourth quarter column of table 2 to A and find the depreciation percent for year 1 is 5%. Your depreciation deduction for the refrigerator is 50, 1,000 times 5% or 0.05. So I mean, and you could calculate this, of course, using the double, uh, the double declining rate, and then a mid-quarter convention, right? But, but, you, but you can use the tables here. So these are the tables, the rules being applied in table format in general. This general concept, because you placed a stove in service in June, you use the second quarter column of table 22A and find the depreciation percent for year one is 25%. For that year, your depreciation deduction for the stove is 150, which is 600 times 25% or times 0.25. Table 22D, use the table when you are using the GDS 27.5 year option for residential rental property, the big one, the big guy, the property itself. Find the, find the row for the month that you place the property in service. Use the percentage listed for that month to figure your depreciation deduction because now you got a mid-month kind of convention you got to be dealing with. The mid-month convention is taken into account and the percentage is shown in the table. Continue to use the same row month under the column for the appropriate year. Example time. Let's do some examples. The purchase, uh, you purchased a single family rental house for $185,000 and placed it in service on February 8th. The sales contract showed that the building cost $160,000 and the land cost $25,000. So you got to break out that land and building thing. So we're not going to be depreciating the land, we're depreciating the building because the land doesn't deteriorate in human lifetimes typically therefore building only so your basis for the depreciation is its original cost which is the 160,000 this is the first year of service for your residential rental property and you decide to use the GDS which has a recovery period of 27.5 years so 27 and a half years using table 22d you find that the depreciation percent for property placed in service in February of year one mid-month condition February year one is 3.182 percent uh, that year's depreciation deduction is 5091 160,000 times 3.182 percent or 0.03182 again software is helpful with these calculation figuring makers depreciation under ads table 21 shows the ads recovery periods for property used in rental activities see appendix b of publication 946 for other property if your property isn't listed in appendix b it is considered to have no class life under ads personal property with no class life is depreciated using a recovery period of 12 years use the mid-month convention for residential rental property and non-residential rental property for all other property use the half year or mid quarter convention as appropriate you can see publication 946 for ads depreciation tables claiming the correct amount of depreciation that's important you should claim the correct amount of depreciation each year should we should we really do that okay claim the right amount if you don't claim all the depreciation you were entitled to deduct you must still reduce your basis in the property by the full amount of depreciation that you could have deducted now that's a problem right you don't want to give up the depreciation right you don't want to say oh i missed it and i'm not going to get i'm just not i'm just going to forego that huge deduction on depreciation so you want to make <laughs> you know you want to make sure to pick it up so for more so for more information see depreciation under decreases in basis in publication 551 if you deducted an incorrect amount of depreciation for property in any year, you may be able to make a correction by filing a Form 1040X. That's an amended tax return, amended U.S. individual tax return. So if you messed it up, then you want to amend it. There is a statute of limitations, so you want to do it. Make sure you, you get back in, in there and, fin and fix it. 
So uh, if you aren't allowed to make the correction on an amended return, you may be able to change your accounting method to claim the correct amount of depreciation. See how, how, how do you correct depreciation deductions in publication 946 for more information. So if you're looking at something, you're like, wow, the depreciation was totally messed up. I didn't claim the depreciation. It's past the statute of limitations. I can no longer amend the return. What do I do? Well, you, you get pissed off, you pull some hair out, you say life isn't fair. And then you could try looking at publication 946 on the IRS website and that might help.